Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Mission TV Show. We're excited to be taping this interview here on the exhibit hall floor of the 2015 General Conference. And I have with me today Brother Parks from AFM, uh, Adventist Frontier Missions. Uh, welcome to the show, and I know that you have an exciting new potential to share with us. We are uh, focusing in on sending uh, tent makers into uh, unreached people groups mm -hmm. uh, throughout uh, Middle East, North Africa, into Central Asia, and uh, and into some countries in in Asia. Yeah. What do and you What do you mean by tent maker? What's a tent? You maker? know, a tent maker is somebody who has a uh, professional skill, uh -huh. and uh, they use it for God's glory. A uh, tent maker is. Uh, a term that really we get from the Apostle Paul. He okay. was a he was a maker of tents, uh -huh. and he used that to support himself. And then uh, while he was making tents, he was also preaching the gospel. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So this is somebody that can go into a country instead of coming in as a missionary, he can come in and get a job. Yeah. And then while he's there, connect friendship evangelism. That kind That's of right. Okay. So their their job becomes their platform for friendships. It becomes also their source of income, mm -hmm. rather than uh, in contrast a, a donor based uh, missionary. Uh -huh. So I work with Adventist Frontier Missions, who have been established uh, for 35 years and sending missionaries very successfully into many countries. Mm -hmm. Those missionaries, though, are, are supported by a, quite a large quorum of donors. Mm -hmm. And uh, thankfully, the donors are, are faithful in, in sending uh, contributions to make that possible. Uh -huh. uh, however, with the, the wide number of people groups that still remain, uh, tent making really provides a, a, a new direction that thousands of people could go. And instead of uh, taking money, using church money, rather they are contributing back because corporations pay them for their services. Uh -huh. And then, of course, they can they use those monies uh, to not only fund themselves but uh, fund others. Okay, so you said something about unreached peoples. Uh, I thought the work was almost done, and I thought the age of the missionary was over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John, I don't think that uh, on Mission TV you really think that. But uh, <laughs> there are thousands of unreached people groups. Some, uh, depending on how you, you count the people groups, uh, some say about 9,000 unreached people groups yet. As of course, as you know, there are many language groups that uh, are still unreached as well. And then there are places that would categorically be reached, uh, such as Hong Kong, but just statistically by the millions, uh, we know that uh, there are, are still uh, large, large numbers of people who have never met a Christian uh, neighbor or a friend. But why would we go over there when there's so much work to be done here in America? Uh, that's a good question. You know, the best uh, example of that is Jesus coming to earth. Mm. I mean, why would he leave heaven? Mm. It's because of love. Mm. And uh, I don't think out of our humanness we can conjure that kind of love. But as mm. we take time in God's word and as we center on his character and it begins to be exemplified in us, it moves our heart to mm. say, I want to tell this good news. Mm -hmm. I got to share this uh, this gospel with somebody. Yeah. And so uh, we're finding professionals that in their their secular career as an engineer or computer uh, designer, they are being stirred in their private mm -hmm. hearts to say, I want to do something more significant for God. I, I want to be uh, where this on the cutting edge of what the spirit is doing. And so people are contacting saying, how how could I go as a missionary? Wonderful. Yeah. Do you have any age limits to this tent maker uh, model? You know, that's one of the great things about tent making. I went as a uh, Adventist Frontier missionary, and they had a cap because of language learning. Mm. And uh, I hate to say it, but when you start getting a little older, your mind gets a little, a little more dull, and it's hard to learn a new language. Mm -hmm. So I learned uh, my language in the Muslim people group that we, we lived among, but it was very difficult. Mm. With tent making, usually these professionals are working among uh, English speakers mm. and so they've gotten a job among people who've taken a lot of energy to learn English mm -hmm. and then they work on on uh, 
winning a man or woman in that context within their own language. I see. So in, in answer to your question, is there an age limit? No. Mm. We have uh, retirees that go. Wonderful. We've had a couple that uh, have gone after gr- after retiring from being university professors, went as an English uh, teacher. He was mm-hmm. a sociology professor, but mm-hmm. took a de- took a job as an a common English teacher at mm-hmm. a university, okay. and just really had a winning influence upon the students there. Wow! Wow! Yeah. So, so this has been going on for quite some time then. Uh, this initiative through Adventist Frontier Missions, which is called Gotential, uh, is just begun in October. Uh-huh. The concept of tent making has been going on since Bible times. Yeah. And of course, yeah. the Waldensians were also uh, tent makers uh, of types and right. uh, using their, their career to go under, under the radar and uh, work for the Lord. So before we go too much farther, I think people would like to start, you know, because this is on, you know, missiontv.com is on the web, so people can start looking up while they're listening to the conversation. But do you have a website that people can start getting more information on? You bet. Okay. Uh, we have prepared a, um, a website here at gotential.org. Wonderful. And uh, this is the name of uh, Adventist Frontier Missions Tent Maker Initiative. We uh-huh. uh, chose this name because really uh, Go is, of course, the Great Commission. Mm-hmm. And tent is what Paul uh, gave us the example, to go and dwell among the people. Jesus uh, went and dwelt among men. And uh, as our missionaries go, they... Uh, they uh, spend time with people and actually start house churches. Mm-hmm. They build uh, friendships with the people. And so the tent has that uh, meaning and then the, okay. the potential as exponential uh, uh, possibilities through the friendship evangelism and house Wonderful. churches. Wonderful. That's awesome. So then uh, this is a website that people can sign up. Yeah, here's a picture of the website. Uh And uh, if people go there, they will uh, be interested to uh, do a job search. Mm. And uh, many professionals would be surprised at how uh, substantive salaries they could earn in a foreign job. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're needing doctors. We're needing people who have... Uh, engineering particularly is a great career Uh Um, computer Uh specialists IT professionals Mm -hmm. uh, nurses Uh, these these jobs as well as any kind of teacher job Mm -hmm. are all available on here we have links to those job search sites and then uh, they can they can uh, get their own job what potential we connect people we uh, help uh, coach people, but we don't find them their job. They need to get their own job. Okay, so yeah. they need to fill out the job application and do the interview process themselves. Right. But this is a resource to start looking internationally for a job in another country. Yeah, that's right. Wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, the next slide I'll show what we have is actually places that uh, are very limited number of Adventists. Mm. And so... Uh, you can see the graphic here. The dark green is represents 50,000 or more SDAs. The light green, 20,000 SDAs or more. Uh, the red is less than 125 members. Uh, these are cities uh, representing a million or more people uh, with less than 125 Adventists. And the black represents cities of a million or more people. Some of these cities, such as this one, is 13 million, and it has no SDA person. Uh, known there and so I think uh, those are the places that strategically we're trying to figure out how could we get some skilled man or woman who's filled with the Holy Spirit loves Jesus wishes to share their faith and they would go and locate themselves or their family or in a team of friends to take a job and uh, place themselves in one of those cities. I just counted these black dots and it looks like there's at least 34 35. That's true black dot the cities of a million or more with no known sda presence at all that's right crazy yeah uh, wow. we call this our, our zero list uh, these are the cities we'd really like to to knock off that list and wow uh, uh, so just going there you know uh, i'm sure you have a lot of stories but i've heard a story also of a man that went to thailand got a job in management in a company and he didn't go outside of his he just befriended his company stayed in his social circle and um, they all became Advent, uh, Christians. Really? Praise and then, God. And then 20 years later, he was invited back after he'd left and retired and everything, invited back. And there was a whole 
whole room filled with people, like 200 people, and oh. they said, these are the leaders of the church groups that were started because of what you did. Huh. And so a lot of times when we go through the class, you know, if you, anyway, doing what you're talking about doing <laughs> is a way that is more effective in the long run than coming as a straight missionary. Yeah, that's, that's very true. And there's several reasons for that. It's because the people are authentic. Mm. When they go there, they, uh, they build friendships in a real context. Yeah, day-to-day uh, -day working, way day -to -day eight working. hours a day, yeah. rubbing and, shoulders. And for discipleship, that means a lot. And I really think mm. that's why Paul was a tent maker because the converts that he won were everyday working people mm -hmm. and they could imagine themselves now witnessing just as their mentor Paul did. Right. He was working, building tents and sharing faith and so they said now I am also a camel salesman or a blanket <laughs> seller or whatever and I right. can do my job and witness. Yes. And so these people in Thailand, he won to Christ, they don't separate and now become Bible workers or separate and become pastors. They become witnessing people in their in their own uh, context. Yes. Um, now this isn't the only way. This isn't taking the place of a traditional missionary. This is another way. Yeah, this is another way. A very good way. A good way. That we haven't really explored much. That's right. And so now you're doing and it. And it really puts uh, power down to the laity. Uh huh. Uh, because there's a lot of very intelligent laity that would like to do something uh, yeah. uh, bold for the Lord. And this right. gives them a chance to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They don't have, to, like, for instance, if you're a CPA, you give all that schooling up and then go be, you know, live in a hut somewhere. That's right. This way you can enter into. Uh, populational dense places and and use your skills that God has given you for it. This is, I think this is wonderful. Amen. Amen. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we have, uh, you know, a biblical basis <laughs> for tent making. And when you look okay. at the names of the people who uh, had a significant service, you take Daniel, for instance, at the highest level of, of government. He had an the, impact on, on his era. Yeah, he sure did. <laughs> Uh, why would we say that uh, Mordecai is a tent maker? Well, again, at the highest levels of government working, Joseph, he was a steward in Egypt, using his career to position God's kingdom in a way that uh, would bless many people. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Wonderful. Yeah. So, uh, of course, uh, Paul worked with Aquila and Priscilla. They were also tent makers, and uh, they used their career as well as they had a home in, uh, church in their home. And that's mm -hmm. what we try to uh, emphasize. We use Jesus' model of a man of peace. Find a man of peace and work with that man. So we're not talking about large-scale evangelism, not uh, crusades, you know, and uh, this kind of thing. But really being sensitive is the Spirit identified one person whose heart is uh, ready to hear. And then through hospitality and love, bringing that person into the fold mm -hmm. and then training them to share the faith with others. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Uh, I don't know if we have time to go through these Bible texts, but uh, Paul, Paul's objective really, like we talked about, was uh, uh, one of integrity mm -hmm. uh, financially, not to just be one who took the money of the believers, mm -hmm. but to, to give back. Okay. All right. Yeah. Wonderful. So I think that's, that's uh, very clear. This uh, graphic I, I like. What do you see happening here, John? Well, the, uh, yeah, it's very difficult, even in, in a country like India, very difficult to get a, a missionary visa. It's easy to get a business visa. Very easy to get a business visa. That's right. So, yeah, very, yeah. very the, clear. These people say, we don't have need for you, right. but we, we are glad you can come in and improve our country. You can come in and give some knowledge to our people that Correct. we don't have. Right, yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's right. That's the way things are. So, I think that's our last slide there. So. Okay, so gotential.org. Um, I'm interested. I think I'm going to go check it out just to see what jobs, what the possibilities out there are. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think a lot of people are a little bit nervous about going out of the United States. But um, I think we're giving up a lot of opportunities to enrich our lives uh, by, li by staying within the known. Well, you never know what kind of adventure you're going to have when you just step outside of what you've been doing all yeah, your life. That's true. And, and you can always come back. You, know, you don't have to, you're not stuck over there. 
Um, and so I think I'm going to go look and see what's up, and see what the potential is for for me. Even though I'm I, I'm, I'm pretty dedicated to what I'm doing, but uh, it's a very curious thing. I mean, I'm curious about seeing what's out there. <laughs> good, you know. Good. Maybe the uh, Lord will will uh, place you in some some unique uh, a new venue. Um, you know the. The uh, I had a, a man who's an a engineer who uh -huh. uh, has told me, he said, I just the day that your email came, he said, I got my first six digit job offer. Uh, it's with the uh, U.S. government. He says, I'm going to turn that down and start looking for a tent making job. Wow. And uh, it's I think it's the same calling that Abraham got. Abraham mm. uh, was comfortable yeah. when God said, leave your home and uh and go yeah and uh it's it is a big uh challenge to m pick up roots and move and yet yeah. to s to experience and be in step with the holy spirit there's nothing like it That's and then right. see who god introduces you to and watch how he opens up doors and and pathways that's right so i would encourage you as you're uh thinking about your life and service for the lord my mother and father actually were tent makers mm. in a communist country and they went and in their older age and taught at a university for one year mm. and uh, just that one year in a very foreign uh, context and yet last year my mom died uh, this is almost 20 years after this tent making experience and people flew all the way from the other side of the world to come to their her funeral and this summer, at the end of the summer, some others are flying from that country to visit my dad, and they've said, we want to learn about Jesus. You were wow. a different type of people. We've never met people like you before. Please tell us. Wow. I, I share this because the seeds that a tent maker plants, they will grow. And God uses uh, people who uh, have Christ in their hearts, and those seeds are never forgotten, and, uh, and they will grow and mature. And uh, as your viewers... Uh, have an opportunity to go to Gotential or to think about service, uh, consider tent making. Man, that's exciting. That's amazing. Amazing story. And you know, one of our uh, uh, mottos for Mission TV is don't die bored. <laughs> <laughs> you know, good. And I think a lot of I people get a little tired of the 9 to 5, 9 to 5 for 20, 30 years straight. Yeah. What do they have to look forward to? You've right. just opened up a whole nother door for people to step out. And one of the main questions that I get when I say is we need to be missionaries is like, who's going who's gonna to fund it? How are we going to pay for that? Right. Well, here you go. Yeah. Here you that's go. It. So thank you so much, uh, Brother Parks, for being with You're us. You're welcome, John. And God bless you as you continue to consider all the ways that God has for you to get involved with his service. Until we see you again, God bless you.